Okay. Let us see this uh, person here trying to call us. Let us see if he will answer. Uh, oh, sorry, you are calling him this guy. Maybe he is asleep now. I think this is an old call. This is not from today. Yeah, yeah, so you know, maybe he is. Uh, uh, oh, he's calling back. Hello? Uh, sorry, did I wake you up? Uh, no, I was actually awake. Oh, okay, because I after I called you, I said, oh, this guy is, you know, in Europe, so maybe he is asleep, you know, so I decided to hang up on you. Uh, so, uh, my friend, what do you want to say to us? You are a Muslim? Actually, yes. Can, can I? Um, there's actually a lot of things I want to talk to you about, actually, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. No problem. <laughs> okay. Can, can we... Um, I'm going to open up YouTube. Uh, you're using the Arabian... Profit, right? Is yes. that right? Yeah. Okay. Can I just discuss with you about um, uh, some of your views about Islam and maybe we can come to an understanding, let's say? No problem. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I want to talk to you about the character Muhammad Safan. You said about, to... about the character? Yeah. You know? Yeah, what about it? Go ahead. Okay, in Islam, we believe that Muhammad is the best of example, as you know, the best of person, etc. What make what make a person the best? Give me the standard. Oh, good question. So I would say a good person, or, or the best of person, uh, from what I've been taught, um, the Prophet, for example, was um, generous with his wealth, um, generous with his time, extremely generous. I mean, he was giving his money to the poor. Um, mm. he, he was always in defense of the poor, you know, and the weak. Mm. Um, what else is there? Um, I mean, his whole mission was uh, f for the poor, right? Mm. So, so this is what. Okay, I let me ask you: If a man he want to marry a woman, and then they agree, they are going to make the father of the woman drunk because he refused to marry her to him, and then when he drunk, they change his clothing. And when he woke up, they told him, he said, why am I wearing those clothes? Uh, Khadija, she said, oh, because you married me uh, yes, last night to Muhammad. He said, no, I did not. She said, do you want me to tell the people of Quraysh what happened? <laughs> Aren't you going to be ashamed of yourself? Is that the one you are talking about? Yes. No. Look, um, we we had a discussion before, and um, I brought this this uh, topic uh, up with, um, with with one of these scholars. So I traveled to the Middle East, spoken to a scholar about it. Hmm. Um, I believe you also provided me some references as well. Okay. Uh, so is he is that a good person or is a bad person? A person. Well, well, he, he, a person. He used he used use alcohol. Him. And his wife, which is not his wife, really, because his marriage was not real. It was a fraud because he did not. The father did not marry her. You know, it was a fraud. So yeah. the, the, the person who his first thing in his life started based on a fraud, how he is the trustworthy. And, you know, you said I gave you the reference, so I do not need to give you the reference again. What about Muhammad? He go to the house of his own son, wife. And he flirted with the wife when she was alone. Is that the trustworthy, the high standard you like for your family? Be honest with me. I'm not trying to make fun of your family or your father. If your father come to your house, yeah, and he flirt with your wife, what you will do? Well, well that's not good, of course, right? Mm. So was was he Muhammad a good person?
Muy bien. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, did I did I take you in a surprise? You know, with my question, you see, because you are the one who starts saying, uh, I brought to you a subject and etc. and about Muhammad, how he is, uh, you know, the best, and he is the best example, and etc. And then it turned to be that everything you said is not true, my friend, because those two things is telling me oh, the quality of the man. You said to me that he gave his money to the poor. Muhammad, he took the fifth of every attack to his pocket. What poor? When a blind man, he came to his house, Muhammad made fun of him and he kicked him out. There's a chapter in the Quran about it because the people start speaking against him saying, what kind of a prophet? He make fun of a blind man just because he's speaking to the rich people of Quraysh. What is the quality? Imagine uh, now you are talking to me and a blind man here and I say to him, shut up, I'm talking to this rich man. Is that the quality of a, of a, of a prophet of God? Okay, and in regards to that story, he did not tell him to shut up. He turned no, he away. did. No, he did. He did. Are you referring to Abbasa? Abbasa, no, Abbasa. Allah, exactly. Yeah, he did. Because what, what Abbasa mean? Let's just open up the Quran. Give me one second. What Abbasa mean? Um, you speak Arabic, no. right? No, no, not so much. Sorry. Okay. Chapter 80, verse number one. Yeah, I'm just opening that up now. Okay. Sorry, give me one second. Um, we got that here. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, he frowned and turned his attention away. Okay, what frown mean? And turn his way? What does that mean? Frowned? So you, you know how you can have a smile? You but get, then the no, opposite he, of he smile. He gave him a face. Right? Yeah, like you're upset. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So shut up can be by saying yeah. the word can, can be saying you know like you know looking at you in a very angry way you know so uh, uh, and remember this guy uh, uh, you know he's blind right yeah yeah so he don't see even what he's doing now correct okay okay so I see what how the mean. man yeah. he knew that muhammad he is unhappy with him unless he said something because I am, I can see, so I can look at your face and I can see that you are not happy, right? But this right. guy is a blind man. When the blind man came to Jesus, he said to Jesus, I want to see Lord. He's a blind man, poor, and homeless, you know. And this is Jesus himself, walking in the street, hundreds and thousands of people want to talk to him, asking for things to do what Jesus did. He made him see. As he, as simple as that. Here we have a guy is not asking Muhammad to make him see. He just want to learn about us now. Imagine now, a person he wanna call me, and I'm talking to you, and he called me baby before you. I hang up on him and says, "Get lost! You are a blind man. You are poor." And even the interpretation says. Muhammad was afraid that the rich people of Quraysh will say, look who is coming to his house. Is that correct? Oh, I, I don't know this. I really don't. Uh, you, can open, you, can, you can open the interpretation and you will see. It says that Muhammad, he was worried uh, that uh, the people of Quraysh, uh, who are the rich, the leaders, they will say, look who is the followers of this man. So if we go to chapter 80, Mm -hmm. And I will show you the interpretation. Ibn Kathir, is that what you're using? Uh, this is a website. Uh, it has Ibn Kathir in English, uh, in Arabic, sorry. But if you want Ibn Kathir, we can go to Ibn Kathir, no problem. Uh -huh. uh, but there is a book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is better because this is to give you the reason for the verse to come down. Yeah. Uh, we are waiting for the page to open. Here we go. So here it says, here is giving you all the story about what happened supposedly. Uh, and then Ibn Umm Maktoum, he stood up and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, teach me of what which Allah has taught you. The guy, he did not do anything wrong. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, and from his narration so, and authority of Ibn Abbas, that he said, oh, sorry. 
So, you can't do. so yeah. this man, this man, he did not speak in an impolite way, right? He's speaking to him as a messenger of God, which means he's a follower. The others are not. Which one is more important? So, and as long he is asking about Allah, this is opportunity for Muhammad to answer him. In the same time, they can listen, right? Yeah. He's not asking about like you know what we will eat, you know. So why he will be upset? And he repeat his request. And remember, this guy is a blind man. And then uh, it says, look here. He said, the prophet, he said to himself, uh, these, the, chief, the chief will say, his followers consist of, the, of only the blind, lowly people and slaves. Did you see it? uh yeah okay okay give me give me one second let me just read the, this what we can see here so so we don't miss anything okay mm. right so it says this is uh this refers to um maktum, the letter went to the prophet muhammad and gave him peace while the okay mm. right. why muhammad is worried about that he have poor people they are his followers why why it matter if they are rich or poor why why does it matter yeah um well well you you have to remember it it actually does matter first of all why right? okay so for example if you went to saudi arabia mm. and you went and preached christianity you know that right now it's illegal right mm. okay um but let's say that you managed to convert one of the prince to christianity mm. you would be in a much better position to keep on going as mm. opposed to converting a blind person in the street but remember is it is it right no no this right. is not right because simply first right. of all muhammad he was not muhammad is not uh, in a society which forbid him from teaching as you know the arab they have a 360 gods around the kaaba correct mm -hmm. which means yeah. they are really very tolerant to other believe and this is a proof that all what muslim says about how intolerant they are it's a lie it was Muhammad is in terms to them, not the opposite, because the Arab, as you see, they have all those gods around the Kaaba and nobody kill anyone. Nobody kill anybody. Everybody worship his God and everybody's fine. So Muhammad here, he have a freedom to teach and nobody oppress him. And now he is speaking to the leaders and they are coming to his house. Correct? Yeah. And the question is about God. So in any way, Muhammad, for him, it's an opportunity to teach about his God. Somebody opened the topic. Thank you for opening the topic. Let us teach you about God. Is it, this is what he want to do? But look what he thought. He thought, oh, he didn't say, I want to convert the chief. He said to himself, look, 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 look. Now they will say, the only one who follow him, they are the blind, the lowly, and the slaves. So Muhammad is the one who looked down at the Muslims, not the chief. In fact, the chief, they are the one who will start wondering why he's doing that. And this is why he made this verse, because they were talking about what kind of a prophet he do such a thing. Why he do that? Muhammad, second day, he starts saying, oh, he heard the news about, they are talking about how bad he is, that he, you know, gave... Uh, give a face to a blind poor man. He was not the decent, ethical prophet of God. He was the opposite. He cared for the rich. He don't care for the poor. And you said something very important, that because if you convert a prince, it's better than converting a poor. That is satanic. That's how, how is that satanic? It is satanic because you are leveling, you are, you are, you are not seeking really saving souls. You are seeking business. You want to have a successful business. If God is with you, who is the prince? Who is the king? No, 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 no. I, I think you misunderstood what I said. No, I did because... not. No, I did not. He, no, is, no. he is trying he's trying to convince the chief because that will make it easier for him to spread Islam, correct? Not only easier, but he it will be in a much safer environment as well. Well, my yes. friend, his, the Muslim, they claim that the family of Muhammad, they are the most powerful in Quraysh. So what safe is environment? And no, they, no, no, no one uh, claimed that. Okay, no they claim, yeah, they claim he's from, isn't Muhammad, he claimed that uh, his family is the best of the 
of Quraysh. <laughs> and then later we find that all of them, they are homosexual. So my friend, listen. Wait, wait, really? Homosexual? Yeah, you can go okay, read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will die laughing. All of it is coming from your, from your Islamic books. All of it. All of it. Zero. Okay, but, but are you saying the Prophet was homosexual as well? I'm not saying he is. Properly he is. As an example, Muhammad, he go and he opened the door totally naked and he kissed men when he is naked. Is that something nice, uh, normal? I don't know. You tell me. So totally naked. You mean absolutely naked, kissing men? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely naked. Kissing them in the mouth or something? I don't know where he kissed him. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> the Hadith says he kissed, you know, he kissed. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, kiss is a kiss, you know. Kiss is a kiss. Where the kiss, I, I have no idea. I, I was not the director. I'll read this hadith with me. It says that uh, Zayd ibn al Harith, very well known person, he said, uh, he arrived to Medina while the Messenger of Allah in his house. So he went and knocked at his door. So the Messenger of Allah stood naked, dragged his garment. And by Allah, I did not see him naked before and nor after. And he hugged me and kissed him. How you hug a man, he is totally naked and you kissed him. He hugged him. Muhammad, he hugged him. The guy, he kissed him. And he is naked. Yeah, well, well, well sorry, sorry. Let, let me just read this again. Sorry. Zayd bin Harith al Medina while the Messenger of Allah was in his house. So he went and knocked at the door. So the Messenger of Allah stood naked, okay, dragging his garment. And by Allah, I did not see him naked before nor after. And he hugged me and kissed me. They say that the meaning of naked there here is that he was not wearing his ridda or upper wrap. And then towards he was dragging. Yeah, okay, okay. So Hmm. So he it seems that he was naked from the bottom. Uh, from no, the no, you see, this is this is this is, this is false. The the English you see there is not in Arabic. This mm -hmm. is the Arabic is not there. This is false addition. To this is why they are adding one and etc. Here we go. The Arabic doesn't say anything of what they are saying in English. Okay, so so he you can go you can go and copy the Arabic. His adopted son. You can go okay. and you go. You can go. You can go. How his adopted son, and later he slept with his wife. <laughs> Secondly, my friend, you are naked. I mean, even if you are, it's your son. Do a man, his private part is in front of him, he hug another man. What son? Anyway, you're, you know, you're a prophet, he wear women, Aisha clothes. You're a prophet, he dress, he put eyeliner three times. He pee like a woman. I mean, everything is wrong. But this is not the problem now. <clears throat> so when you speak to me about uh, the ethical prophet, that ethic no, is... No, sorry, sorry. That, that is a prophet. That is a problem for me, you know. If, if, if what you're saying is true, then then this is not good. I'm not you know saying what? anything. I'm not saying anything. It's in the front of you. This is you, Muslim, saying nothing. No, me. no. So, right. So this one here, they're, they're trying to explain, saying that he was naked mm. only from the <laughs> up... Upwards, right? Not the, no, the bottom. Nowhere it says that in Arabic. Read it. Here we go. Nowhere it says that. It says, فَأَتَاهُ فَقَرَعَ الْبَابَ فَقَامَ إِلَيْهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَرْيَانًا يَجُرُّ ثَوْبَهُ وَاللَّهِ مَا رَأَيْتُهُ أَرْيَانًا قَبْلَهُ وَلَا بَعْدَهُ فَتَنَقَهُ وَقَبَّلَهُ قَالَ أَبُوْ عِيْسَى هَذَا حَدِيثٌ حَسَنٌ غَرِيبٌ لَا نَعْرِفُهُ مِنْ حَدِيثِ الذُّرِي etc. But there's nowhere all the explanation is there. This is additional to cover up the problem. Yeah, okay. You can take the English, the Arabic words, you can post in Google Translation, and you will see that all of this is addition. All the English you see is addition, it's not there. Okay. Hmm. And uh, you said he was wearing Aisha's clothing, right? He wear Aisha clothing, he, he, he put eyeliner, uh, oh. uh, you know, I mean, everything about him is wrong. What, what about the man who came in Muhammad? He came from uh, his back. Uh, and Muhammad, he started tickling him. The man, he was topless. The man, he said to Muhammad, this is not fair, joking with him, like laughing. I am topless, I'm naked, topless, and you are not. 
and then the prophet he lift up his shirt so now both of them they are topless and the guy now he hold him he put his back on him and uh, you know uh, he, he, kissed his he, stomach? he embraced him and he began to kiss his side no but he wasn't uh, it wasn't tickling the prophet accidentally hit him with a stick right no 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 uh, no, 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 no 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 read it read it, read oh, it. you have open air of the read it says here Okay. The man of Ansar said that while he was giving, uh, while he was given to jesting and talking to the people and making them laugh, the Prophet poked him under the rib with a stick. So it's not a mistake. He poked him. Uh, he said, uh, "Let me take retaliation." He said, "Take retaliation." He said, "You are wearing a shirt, but I am not." The Prophet then raised his shirt, and the man embraced and began to kiss his side. Okay. He then he said, "This is what I wanted, Messenger." Okay. Hmm. Um, <laughs> right, this is weird. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know why he's poking people with sticks, and I don't know why people are kissing his stomach. That's strange. Or his he embraced him, he embraced him, and the prophet he left up his shirt. So now both of them they are naked in the top. Yeah, and he kissed his side, so he was on his knees. Okay. is even down his side, not the side down, like down from the from the side, like you know the where where your waist is. This is this is where the kashhau, the under the belly. Yeah, yeah, the the hip area, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Does it does it does it sound like a prophet of God, or two lousy people? Maybe I mean, maybe they are not, uh, you know. Uh, doing something, you know, purposely wrong, but yeah. all, uh, as they say, all roads take you to Rome. <laughs> so all details is taking us in one direction. Okay, I also heard you mention. So, so what? What is holding you to be a Muslim, my friend? Uh, okay. Now you see, um, since we last spoke, it was a couple of months ago. Right? I forgot, you know, really. Uh, remind yeah, me of yourself. Okay. No, I see, fine. actually, I, I just noticed a text from you, but I didn't know if this is uh, uh, it's it, like, is that an well, old Please don't text? mention my name. Please don't mention it. Just no, call no, me I, will, I will not mention your name, but you spoke to me before, as I understand, right? Yes. yes okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so we, we spoke before. Um, I've noted on everything that you mentioned. Yeah. I then spoke to local scholars in, in the UK. Um, well, we call them sheikhs, not scholars. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't get my answer, so I went to the Middle East. Booked a flight, went there, and started asking scholars there. Okay. Right? Um, I did not get a satisfactory answer, to be honest. And and uh, as you know, uh, it's, it, there's no point of lying or trying to defend something that you, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So w what's holding me back is uncertainty. I, I'm not too sure. I I don't feel this is right, you know. Mm. Um, but if I'm wrong, you burn in hell fire. It's a very big problem. Hey, you know, you know, if you change your gender, you can come back. I I will give you away. This is between us and, you know, don't tell anyone. If you change your gender, uh, Allah can take you away. If you go to Thailand and you install a new nice boobs and a nice private part of a female, Allah will take you from hellfire guaranteed. Do you know that? <laughs> no, no. Okay. But because the, the punishment for the punishment for anyone who is actually, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know about the hadith uh, uh, about uh, people who change their appearance, right? No, no. The the Muhammad he said uh, that uh, Allah will take 72, 70 women from the inheritance from hell, who all their uh, all those women, their front passages are desirable. Mm -hmm. so all what you need to do in case you are afraid go and do whatever you want just go to Thailand change your gender and uh, you know uh, and Allah will take you out of him heaven from hell because you have nice messages have you ever heard of a God 
he will take women from hell because they have nice passages uh, no no I, I don't hear that yeah but what, what do you think about it I mean you are now in hell and just because you have nice boobs and then Allah will take you out of from hell and he will send you to heaven because you are very good for sex so this woman actually she enjoyed her life on earth and now she is going to enjoy it more in heaven why because she, obviously she enjoy having sex with a lot of men <laughs> and now she is going to do the same business in earth but this time it's in heaven for eternity <laughs> there is no one who Allah will meet to paradise but Allah will marry him to 72 wives from the whores and then to from his inheritance from people of hell all of whom will have desirable from passage and he will have a male member that will now become uh, uh, and he will have a male member okay so it's in reference to the person in, okay mm. I actually for me I was going to convert because I have a problem my main member sometime become a flushed a flaccid so I said to myself uh -huh, now we found a solution now if I convert to Islam my main member will have a membership of standing for the anthem forever you know you know what I mean so now I e soft and limp you will never have that problem you know, like always ready. You can break walnut with it. You can break a coconut with it. You know, it's just always ready. Just go for, you can go for war. You know, you can even fight people. And good for shooting. So what kind of a prophet? What is this? This is a prophet talking or this is a porn. This is a playboy station guy in the magazine. He's promoting sex toys or what? Who is this? Who's talking? Uh -huh. Yeah, no, no, this, this is this is all good. Fair point. Okay. What do you mean not good? You know, you will have a male member can can break a coconut, and you are telling me not good. I want to go there. <laughs> you know, if this is true, I mean, you know, like uh, the, there's a guy he called me before you. He said uh, they mentioned somebody he do kickboxing. We will change uh -huh. it. We will call it a, a, a penis boxing, because look at this penis. You know, who need the kickboxing? Huh? Look at the. I mean, this is a prophet of God. How in the world this guy he became a prophet? I want to know. And how, how the Muslim, they see this and they say it's okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Now, um, right, let, let me take one step back. What do, okay, but be careful, you know, because don't step on it, because now it is so strong, you know? The male <laughs> member is all over the place. <laughs> watch watch your, where you step on. Okay, what, what you want to step where? No, no, because because look, look at this. Um, you guys are the people of the book, right? Mm. The, the Christians, as the Quran says, mm. and we're supposed to consult you guys. Well, the Prophet was told to consult you guys, right? Mm -hmm. With, when he has doubts. Okay. Okay. Now, please, can you show me or, or tell me in your book what what um, the signs of a false prophet? You know, I'm sure your your prophet or your gods told you. This. Very easy. If he speak in the name of other god, or he gave false prophecy. Yeah, Muhammad he did both. If he if, what about other gods? What? If he prophesy in the name of other god, which means is a false god, and that is Allah, or he if he gave uh, false prophecies, Muhammad he did both. He spoke in the name of a false god. His name is Allah, and he gave tons of false prophecies. Actually, all his prophecies are false. As an example, Muhammad, he claimed yeah. that the Roman, they are going to be the majority of mankind. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before the day, uh, uh, before the judgment day. So, and if you go to Italy now, they will, you will know that they have a um, problem. But, but why are you talking about Italy? I don't understand. The Dr because Roman, you know, Roman. Yes, but, but even the time of the prophet, you know, he was born in the year 500. Yeah. Rome was already taken over by the Goths. And By the whom? Roman Empire was in Constant, uh, Constantinople. No, this is uh, this is the divided Rome, but this is the Roman is in Rome. Roman is yeah, coming from the from the Rome, you know. The Roman is Rome. The Constantinia is the separated kingdom because they divided between Orthodox and Catholic. Uh, 
But no, they divided by east and west. But but east they were west, always sorry, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but the, they were always the, the, they were always the two Roman. sons. The two sons of the king, they fight over the the throne, and then it became two kingdoms, and it's still but it's still this uh, same. But the, when you say Rome, when you say the Roman, you say all those who belong to Rome. Yes, all Roman citizens, right? And you know, even people back in in in, in those days, people in North Africa, in Egypt. Were, were Roman citizens, right? But no, only the Roman are Roman citizens, the rest are not. There's only a few people from the rich ones, they've been given like the honor to be called a Roman citizen. But reality is the Roman is the Roman. It's like now, in USA, I am an American citizen, but I am not a native American. Is that correct? Yes, but if I say to you that one day America will be the majority, in America, you're considered American, so you are part of this group. Okay, so when we speak about the Roman, the Roman are at that time of Muhammad, they are a state, are they? Yes, because okay. of even in, in the Quran, in Surah Rum. Okay, what is, the, what, what is the Roman state today? The the, the state hmm. is uh, destroyed, but their, their, their people and its culture is, is still here with us. No. Yes, this is, this is, American, he's talking about he's also. speaking about people, not speaking about culture. Why not speaking about pizza, my friend? Yes, okay, but if you say, for example, like okay, if I said the Abbasid and uh, or the Arabs will be the majority, hmm. are you going to consider the Egyptians as, as Arabs or not? First of all, Arab are not an ethnic, and uh, Arab they are not a country, and they are not a kingdom. Uh, when you say the Roman, everybody knows understand very well. Who is the Roman? He said a room, a room, a room. It's not. There's a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the room. He says, "Ghulibat huzimat al room." So the room is the one who are fighting the Persian. Those are the room. Do we agree? Do we agree? Yes. And okay. and and who were they? Who were okay. those people? They were the, not from Italy. The, uh, who is their king? Yes, he he was he was based in Constantinople. Okay, and there is the rulers who is in Jerusalem. Correct. For the Romans? Yeah. Isn't it your that prophet? A... He sent the letter. Uh, a, a governor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a ruler. Yeah. yeah so yeah. simply, the Roman is those uh, people, whoever they are, but mm, all of them they belong to Rome. That's why they are called the Roman. Okay. So the okay. So you know Paul in, in your Bible. Yeah. He was a Roman, right? A citizen, but he was also a Jewish person. Yeah, but as I said, there is noble person, people who gave them uh, the title of a Roman citizen, but mm -hmm. still they are not from Rome. But the Roman is the Roman, still will not change anything. There's a Roman citizen, and there's the Roman. Like I can be an Indian, a citizen in India, so they give me a passport, but I am not Indian. Correct? Okay, okay, I, I see what you're saying here, yeah. but but either way, they're not the majority. Either way, okay. Whoever they are, who are because the Chinese are majority. Who, right? who are they? You know, uh, the Roman simply uh, the the people of Rome is the Roman. Anything else is not. You know, okay. you can make it give it definition. You can push it there. You can push it here. You can say the Roman at that time they occupy Egypt, but still the Egyptian. The Coptic, they were four millions. The Roman, there, they are not even maybe a few thousands. So, the Roman are the one is ruling, but the the people are not Roman. The same as in Israel, the Roman are ruling. You know, couple of hundreds of soldiers controlling the city, but the population are Jews. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can say that the, the the Israel, everybody there was a Roman, but there is some. They are considered as a Roman citizen, and those are from the noble or those who they are serving in the military as officers. So here we see that Muhammad he says the Rome, the Roman, will will form the majority among the people. When he spoke about the people, he mean all mankind, correct? So did he say that? Uh, sir, sir, what was your question? When he said the Roman, they will form the majority among the people. Who is the people? What he meant by people? No, this is humanity. Mm -hmm. Humanity. And this is absolutely false. Let us say the Roman is the European. All of Europe together is not even 400 million. Mm -hmm. Just to mm -hmm. make it like, to give it the spice. But all of us, we know that even Italy, 
they have a big problem with population because people are not getting married. There's a huge number of old people. And the younger one is way, the, uh, way less than the one who's dying. So if this country continues like this, maybe in 60, 70 years, Italy will disappear as a population. So this is a false prophecy. What happened to Asia? What happened to India? What happened to China? What happened to Indonesia, Bangladesh? The Roma are the majority of mankind. Right, but is he not saying here the last hour would not uh, would come when the Romans would form a majority amongst the people? I mean, okay, as we stand right now, right, uh, as of today. He said the, it's the, clearly Kursa, not true. the right day now, will come, the day will come, this is what will happen. When the day come, the Roma will be majority. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, but anything can happen. Look, I'm not saying that, I'm not going to tell you that this is... Um, correct now because now the Chinese are the majority right and then the Indians but you see when your prophet he mentioned uh, the judgment day he spoke about the judgment day to happen very soon the previous yeah, but... one who called me he, he mentioned the hadith where it says he said he said to a youth person this person will not grow to get old before the hour come the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, oh, he don't mean the hour, the judgment day. He meant their hour. That's false. What their hour? There's no hour come to anyone. There's one hour, the hour of... The second you say the sa'a, everyone understand that it is the judgment day. So, uh, Muhammad, he gave tons of false prophecies. And if you don't want to believe in, I mean, to, to consider those, the Quran itself, we just ask the person before you, uh -huh. Do you agree with the hail coming from mountains in heaven? I will give you the same question. Because this is a prophecy too. If I'm a prophet claiming that I know, and my God, he taught me, and then I say that hail is coming from mountains in heaven, that is a claim of a prophet, not a claim of a person speaking about uh, uh, guessing, right? He's not guessing. He's speaking about facts. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. I know, I know the verse you're referring to. Okay, uh, so if if this prophet, he is making a statement, and this statement is obviously silly, stupid, uh, then he's not a prophet. This, this is a prophecy, because simply he's talking about something at that time, people do not know. So he is telling them something. The reason he's mentioning this, why? Because supposedly he is delivering information from God, right? And this yeah. information is at the unseen. It's something we don't see how it works, how it happened. So he is telling you about the unseen, and the unseen, yeah. you know, uh, is saying, or the God who is telling us about the unseen, there is hail coming from mountains in heaven. Allah break it from those mountains, send it down. And this is chapter 24, verse number 43. So if, if you would want to consider the Roman story, you would want to consider all the stupid things he said, well, uh, this is additional one. There's no way God, he would say such a thing. Hasn't thou seen how God has drives the clouds, then composes them, then converts them into a mass, <clears throat> then how sees the rain issuing out of the midst of them. He sends it down out of the heaven mountain, heaven mountains, <laughs> wherein... Wait, what? He sends down out of heaven mountains, wherein is hell, so that he smites from the wolves. Okay, okay. Can you just give me the verse? I'm going to use a different translator. Chapter 24, verse number 43. And 24. different translation we can change. They are adding things just to fix it. They 24. Are lying. <clears throat> you said 33? Chapter 24, verse 42, 43. Yeah, okay, okay. Right, let's see him. Uh, and uh, you said 43, sorry. And you don't see. Mm -hmm. And he sends down from the sky mountains. But he put brackets of clouds. Why would you do that? Okay, he then sends. Okay, so he sends down from the sky mountains loaded with hell. Okay, 
you know, in, in the other translation I'm looking at here, um, uh, in fact, he, it says here that... Um, My friend, I know what other translation says, they are lying. You can go to the Arabic. And... Yeah, let me, let me just get my dictionary, give me one second here. Because you know, if 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 this is there is a website, I think it's I called Quran. I think Quran.com, something like that. You can move the mouse over every word. It's yeah, going to show you the word in English. They are lying. You know, it says, "وَيُنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ جِبَالٍ فِيهَا مِنْ بَارَدٍ فَيُصِيبُ بِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ." Anything else is a fabrication. They add uh, brackets. Yeah, you're right. They you're say. Right. Okay. Um, uh, like mountains it doesn't say that it says he sent down out of mountains in heaven actually you know what i can show you the interpretation here we go 24 43 here we go uh, No, no, I, I've, I've checked it on my side. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, uh, see, when, uh, we are in Arabic and we are in public and it's recorded. If I'm lying, Muslim, they will laugh at me. You know, I mean, they, 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 uh, they are in denial all the time, but <clears throat> a, a smart person, he will not lie because people, they will use it against you, you know, if you are trying to be honest. So uh, he is he's sent down. This is the tafsir. Uh, Ibn Abbas, it says, he sent down from heaven, from the heaven, mountains wherein is hail. He sent down hail from mountains in heaven. Do you see it? Yeah, I can see that. And this is Ibn Abbas. So all the translation, they are trying to cover up, you know, duct tape, this is what the Muslims do. They duct tape their Quran, the ad words is not there to fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I, I I don't do this. Okay, so I I will ask you just one few more. If that's all right, and and then I will okay. I will have to make a choice actually. All right. To be honest. Okay. Um. Oh my God. Okay. So so we we okay. What's the, what's your God's name? Is Yahweh right? There is no really. The, you see, the, uh, people who don't speak the language, yeah. because the language is is a foreign language, so they think when he say Yahweh, it's a name. It's not. Yahweh is I am who I am. So for you, because you're a foreign person, you hear it with a foreign tongue, you think it's a name, but the fact it's a sentence saying, I am the one who exists by myself. I'm God. So it's not really a name, you know. So when Moses, he asks God, what I will tell my people, what's your name? He, tell, he said to them, tell them, I am who I am. Uh, and, you know, you will notice that the Jews, when they speak about God, they say many things, but they don't say names. So like Hashem, uh, you know, uh, I mean, all uh, there's many names, many titles, as I say, or description, but it's not a name for a very simple reason. Because if God is a miracle, there's no language and no letters can describe him. Uh-huh. Okay, so 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 your God doesn't have a name. This is yeah. what this is what he told us, and the only name we knew, uh, like even those are not names. As an example, Christ, Christ is not a name. You know, mm -hmm. everything in the Bible is not a name. Even Adam is not a name. Even the sons of Adam are not names. Even Noah, even Abraham, even Moses are not names. Are the story and the meaning, yeah, and you will notice that everyone given what it's so-called name, so we can recognize them with it, based on his story. <laughs> so th th that's very interesting. So are, are you saying that these people are not real? And mm -hmm. it's just uh, trying to be like no, a, I'm saying, a bigger story? No, I'm saying that every name is given for a reason. This is a very carefully book. You know, names are not given. You can, you know, like somebody, your son born, you give him a name, you can call him whatever, you know. You can call him Khalid. But he's not yeah. eternal, right? Khalid is eternal, but he's not eternal. Yeah. But you will notice that the names are given to everyone is given to describe his position. As an example, Adam meaning human. Adam mm -hmm. meaning human. And later become a word mean man. 
uh, but God he called Adam and Eve called him Adam you know human so it's given that name because he was the first human and then uh, uh, Abraham the one who crossed the river Abraham the, the, the one who crossed to the other side uh, so his name is given based in what uh, happening to him and what he did you know it's not really a name as much as a description of his life story Moshe the one who's been saved from drowning so his name oh, Musa Musa yeah Moshe you know you can go and check the name so he been saved from the drowning he's going to drown you know they put him in the river right the story so yeah so uh every person but, was given sorry they just just a quick thing on that. So, are you saying if I was there at that time, I would not have known him as Musa, but maybe something else? Is that what? Is that right? It's Moshe, not not Musa. Musa is an Arabic Moshe. name. Yeah. 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 So, uh, what okay. I'm saying that those names are not really names; are describing the person and his mission. So, the same as we say Christ. You know, we are not describing. Uh, it's not a name. It is a title for the mission. Who is this person? What he will do? What his position? in earth or in heaven so names are not really names they are let us say a message a delivery from god abraham his name is delivery from god adam his name is delivery from god christ is delivery from god himself he is the he is the name he is the word and he is the god himself so every name in the bible is not really a name it is a life story. You can go. There's a video in uh, in YouTube. Uh, it's about it's called the uh, uh, Genesis five. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, okay. let, let me hang up on you, and I will play the video, and you can call me after we finish it, so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Let us see. There's another place that God appears to have laid out his plan in advance, and that's in some subtleties, and one of which I'd like to share with you in Genesis chapter 5, a genealogy. The genealogy in Genesis chapter 5 goes from Adam, the first man, down through Noah. And in Genesis chapter 5, if you wade through that, I encourage you to make a list of the names. Adam gives, uh, gave birth to Seth. Seth, Enosh. Enosh, Kenan. Kenan, Mahalal. Mahalal, Jared. Jared, Enoch. Enoch, Methuselah. Methuselah, Lamech. And Lamech was the father of Noah. Let's take these names. Ten names. But see, the problem is we need to know what the names mean. And if you have a study Bible or a source, a, a lexicon, what have you, you know that the name Adam means man. As you go through your Bible, when these names are typically first introduced, most of your marginal footnotes will tell you what the name means. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. 
Lamech means the despairing, and the word Noah means rest or comfort. Now, let's read that genealogy as a sentence. Man is appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Isn't that wild? So as you see, it looked like it's names of people, you know, he have his son, his son is etc., etc., you know, and and you will find uh, some names are really strange. I mean, his death. Why anyone want to call his son his death? His death shall bring. How you? Why anyone want to call son his son such a name? So, for us, because we don't speak the language. It appear like names because it's a foreign language, but in reality, it is a message. So when somebody says, where Jesus in the Old Testament? Where is the Messiah who will come as a man? Where is the Messiah who will be crucified? Where is the Messiah who is going to die? And where is, this is a Christianity. This is a Christianity, all of it. It's just in one chapter and a few verses about the sons of Noah. So the ignorant, they think it's name. The learned, they knew what it is. Let us call our friend here and see if he heard me. Yeah, hello. Yes, did you, did you uh, watch it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, it was very nice. It's not very nice. This is amazing. This is astonishing. Yeah. You know. Uh, so we have a we have a clear proof. That's why I'm saying to you: the names in the Bible are not names. They are not names. They are given carefully, inspired by God, for delivering a message. So this is not a book to talk about the ant speaking to Solomon or Solomon listening to the ant and all those, you know, silly stories. This is a serious book speaking from the beginning about the message and what God he is going to have for us as a plan to save us. So from the first time, from the first, uh, uh, you know, let's say the days of existence of Adam, God he inspired to, to for those names to be given so those who will read them they will know what's going to happen and who is going to send to save them that God himself he is going to down go down and this man is appointed man he is God himself who is going to come to the earth and his teaching and his death is going to bring despairing and comfort okay i did not even notice this until now okay right it's talking about jesus as well mm. it is jesus yeah yeah mm -hmm. so the muslims if you ask you know the muslims like you are a muslim what abraham mean you don't know no we don't know what Adam mean you don't know what what Michael mean you don't know Gabriel, you don't know israel you don't know because muhammad religion is a theft Muhammad's religion is a theft. You know, if you remember, there's a video, uh, there's a video of, of Didat, and he was yeah. making fun of, uh, of the Bible speaking about uh, Israel or Jacob mm -hmm. struggling with the angel of God or with God himself. And he mm -hmm. says, what kind of a book he says that? But the idiot, he forgot, because he's ignorant, that the word Israel is that story. Why Israel? Why Jacob became Israel? There's nowhere in the Quran that says to you how and who is even Israel, right? The Quran mentioned Jacob, but nowhere it's mentioned how Jacob became Israel. No, it doesn't mention it, you're right. Mm -hmm. So, did that because of his ignorance, he forgot by accepting the name, he accepted the story in the Bible. Because the Quran says it clearly, his name is Jacob. So what happened? How Jacob became Israel? The only answer for that you will find it in the Bible. So Muhammad, because he's a thief, he stole names. He do not know what they mean, and that's why he is, you know, he got busted. He been exposed. 
So uh, then this makes me ask you another question because okay. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out, first of all. Let's be clear here. You, but, are, you are out of Islam already, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Let, let's be serious. It's, um, all right. yeah, I mean, I can lie to people, but, but you, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. Wouldn't be right to even say that, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what, what do you think of Muhammad now? As long as you are out, that's mean you agree that Muhammad is a false prophet. Well, you know, I've been on a plane recently and I don't see any mountains, you know? Hmm. So, yeah. This cannot be true. How can you say that, you know, he th um, God throws an... Uh, uh, a mountain of ice, you know, and aims at people. You know, this is not even a nice thing to even say. Yeah. It's actually kind of a horrible thing <clears throat> if you think about it. It's very mean because right. they have no chance. So, no, I, this is not good. Okay. Um, so, so these people then, you know, Adam, uh, Noah, are these all prophets? You know, in Islam, all these people, all, every character we have is a prophet. You know what I mean? Every character? Okay, so in, in the Qur'an, we have 25 prophets, right? Yeah. Are meant basically in the Qur'an. Mm. We have Solomon, we have David, we have Elijah, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no sort of thing. Yeah, anyway, he gave them different, their own names. Anyway, okay. Their own names, yeah. But my question, uh, uh, when I, I mean Elias, you know? But my question to you is, <coughs> are, are, are these also prophets? Because when I read the story of David in the Bible, I don't think he's a prophet, you know? Well, you know, everyone he understands the word prophet in the way he wants. So a prophet, if somebody spoke to God, some people, they say he is a prophet because God spoke to him. But, you know, uh, that, you know that uh, Mary, she received message from God, correct? Yes, exactly. But she is not a prophet, right? So it depends on the person and his intelligence, how he can see things and how he wants to see things. For us... All the names in the Bible, even Mary herself, is exists for a reason, and that reason is the coming of Jesus. Otherwise, the rest are not really important. So David is not important. Solomon is not important. What is important is that God, he loved the world. And because he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son to save the world. And David and everybody is part of this world. They are not out of it. They themselves need to be saved. So the Messiah is the Savior. And there's no one else will save us from what is coming. This is the message of the, of the Bible. And, uh, and, you know, all names mentioned there because they have a role of preparing or let us say, uh, for the coming of Jesus. Otherwise, all names are not really important. You know, is uh, is Paul is important? No. Impo Paul is one like me and you. He is, uh, he is the, the disciple, yes. You know, the Lord appeared to him. Uh, he is the church father, yes. But still, the Bible says all men, they are sinners and they are short of a glory. So all of us, we need a savior. His name is Jesus. So all the names, they are there for a reason. And this reason is that, you know, that God will come in this earth to save us. Okay, but, but okay, that's fine. I think, to be honest, it, it sounds good, you know, what you're saying. You um, see, all of us, like now, I'm here with you, and we are talking. Uh, why I want to waste my time and you waste your time? What about you go and watch a movie? I go watch a movie. What do you think? You know, so we are here for a reason, and uh, uh, based on your interest, the reason is exist. So the one who have interest in something, he will be where he is interested. That's why you know the Bible says, like uh, you know, where is your treasure? Your heart will be. So if your treasure is gold, your heart will be with your gold. If your treasure is God your heart will be with God. If your treasure is sex, <laughs> your treasure will be with sex. So where is your treasure? You will find yourself. Uh, so everybody, every human being, he have his own interest. 
and your interest is who you are. And this is why there's people of God, you know, you mentioned that the Quran call us people of, of, of the book, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and the Quran never called Muhammad or his people, people of the book. Actually, he called them Ummiyin, which means mm -hmm. ignorant, you know, the ignorant. So when the Quran, yeah, not, not illiterate, ignorant. You see? Uh, well, the, so, so when the Quran says yeah, no, that the, you see the, the Muslims they don't even understand their book I mean this is how ignorant they are because okay. you see the chapter 2 verse number 70 it says some of them they are Ummiyin they do not know the book so the word Ummiyin is about not knowing the book of God not about not knowing how to read how to write you okay. understand? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so uh, the Quran itself gives definition. The one who do not know the book of God, otherwise it will be funny that all the Christians, they knew how to read, how to write in the time of Muhammad, and that's impossible because, you know, education is not available for everybody except uh, the wealthy usually, you know? Uh, you know, a person, not everyone, he will get a chance to learn how to read, how to write. Uh, so, the 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 Quran says it clearly, and actually this is coming from the Old Testament, the Gomai, the ones who they are, uh, the pagan. Here the ignorant is the pagan. So we are the people of the book, and everybody else is pagan. Yeah, I this is the def this is the definition of the Quran. Quran says people of the book, people of the book. Why? Because every else, everyone else, is pagan, and that means Muhammad himself is pagan. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, okay, I um, I, I appreciate your time, uh, and I so, guess thank you. So, uh, so what do you think? You know, what do you think? You want to be Christian or what now? As long as you decide to leave Islam, what is left? To, to be a what, sorry? A Christian? Yeah. I don't think I'm allowed to be a Christian, you know? Why are you because, not allowed? Look, um, actually, Islam is actually pretty racist, you know this? Pretty racist? For sure. It's a white supremacist uh, Arab cult. Okay, and then I'm not white. Uh -huh. Now, I, I don't know about your religion. But I, I don't know. Well, if I just you told are... you that it... Jesus, he loved the for God, he loved the word. God, he loved the word, so he sent his only begotten son. What does that mean? But to he's you? only talking to Jewish people. You no, know? why? No, love the word. When the, when the disciples they went and they they spoke in tongues, and even this miracle is mentioned in the in the in in Islamic books. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, why why the disciples they will go to Ethiopia? Why they will go to Egypt? Why they will go to India? Why they will go to everywhere? If they are racist, they will go only to the white. Especially they themselves, they are white. So you're telling me Jesus' own disciples went to India and Ethiopia? Exactly. One of the mm -hmm. oldest mm -hmm. churches, actually. One of the uh, oldest churches. Uh, is Indian church, I think, in Calcutta, uh, where uh, 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 one of the one of the disciple of uh, of Jesus, and the same for the disciple of Jesus went to Egypt. The, the Egyptian and the Ethiopian, they are one of the first. The first church was in, in Antioch, but uh, as known as a church, but the most well known ancient churches from the beginning it was in africa and in india you mean north africa or you talk about ethiopia uh, ethiopia specifically but ethiopia is a huge you know ethiopia is an empire at that time you know yeah yeah, yeah. Was ethiopia huge. was all the way actually uh, uh, before to yemen not only ethiopia today this is why you yeah. see that the yemeni most of them they look ethiopian and if you if you go to the bible too if you go to galatian uh, chapter 3, verse number tw uh, 28, it says, there is neither Jew or a Greek, uh, 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 a slave, neither a slave nor a free, 
nor there is male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. So the Bible makes it so clear uh, that in Christ, there is no ethnic, there is no slave, there is no free, there is no Hebrew, there is no Greek. Your citizenship is not exist. What is exist is your unity with the Messiah. When this is in the Bible. Okay, and when we die, then what happens? In the end? You know, in Islam, you get women, whatever. You don't get this. No, Do in, I... in 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 heaven, in Christianity, the the heaven of God is the holy kingdom of God, and because it's holy, we will have different level of happiness. You see, when we say God, if God can make me enjoy uh, food, right? He gave me something in my tongue, very complicated chemical connected to my brain to make me taste food, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't mm -hmm. he give me something even way better? For sure he can. So yeah. what, what he will give you in heaven have nothing to do with physical happiness because at the end, the end of the day, actually, all happiness is in the brain. It's not physical. All, yeah, all everything you do is a message goes to your brain, even when you have sex. So it's your brain actually will have orgasm. It's your brain who tastes the food, not your tongue. It's your brain who feels uh, the sadness and make your tears come, or your brain will make you cry again from happiness. It is the brain. So can God who made us happy for less things can make us happy in different way in higher level? For sure he can. So Jesus, he said, he will she, they will not be, uh, they will not get married because they ask him about, okay, this woman, she marry uh, multiple husband. Who is going to be, who is going to have her in heaven? He said, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same, the likeness of an angels. So what, what Jesus, he meant here, you know, angels have no needs. They don't sleep, they don't drink, they don't eat. And those are exactly. needs. So with Jesus, you are free from needs. And that by itself is heaven. Imagine you have a car, you can drive forever. You never stop for gas. You never have a flat tire and you never need to rest from driving. So with Jesus, you will not be addicted to sex, physical needs, because in Islam, you are going to be addicted more, subjugated more to your needs. You will have a river of wine river of milk, uh, 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 in this private port, a lot of women to sleep with. With the Messiah, you will uh -huh. be a child of God and you will be the same as an angel. And that is something I cannot explain to you because I cannot explain happiness. I did not feel yet. I have to be there and then we can talk about it. So if you accept the Messiah, God is willing. Me and you, we will meet one day in the holy kingdom of the Lord Messiah. And we can talk about it then. Mm -hmm. And, um, sorry, sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. Sorry. Okay, right. <clears throat> okay, w w what does it mean to be a Christian? You know what I mean? Well, the, the, the Messiah, he answered that. He says, uh, you know, love your enemy. So with the Messiah, you know, you learn about love. Love is not just a, a word to say, and love is not sex. And love is not loving food. Love is learning how to forgive. Love is learning how to give. Love is learning how to give without expectation from others. So if you learn all of those, you are already in the level of the angels, and you are with the Lord. So with the Messiah, simply, the same as the Messiah, he, you know, he, he, he went to the cross, and he knew they are going to do that to him, and yet in the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. If you can reach a little bit of that point, then you will learn what love is. He loved them to the point he asked for forgiveness for them, even though they are crucifying him. So if you look at this and you learn from this story, you learn that even when you are crucified, 
You shall not bow down to hatred, and you shall not be a soldier of hate. You should be a person who forgive. This is why when they ask the Lord how we pray, he says, pray like this, our Father art of heaven. And then right away we will see, he says, ask, you know, uh, 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 forgive to us, the same as we forgive to others. So in Christianity, you learn right away that if you love, you forgive. And if you forgive, you will be forgiven. And this is the book. And this is God. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. What I what I really wanted to understand is this, you know. Um, okay. For the last 10 years, right? I haven't missed one prayer. You know? So how do you guys pray? We just did. <laughs> you see? Anything, anything, you come from your heart to God, it's a prayer. A prayer is not a ritual and should not be a ritual. Prayer is something coming from your heart to your maker. Say as you wish, speak as you wish, but never wish something ugly and evil. Wish love, wish forgiveness, wish decency, and you are praying. Very simple. There's no need to, you know, go line up together. But we can, like in the church, we gather and we pray and we, you know, uh, we sing to the Lord too. Uh, but the prayer, Jesus, he says, you go to your closet and pray to your father. Why he is saying go to your closet? Because he don't want hypocrites. And he said to us, don't be like the hypocrite who pray in the corners. That's Those, what we do. And no. this is what the Muslims do, exactly. So yeah. do not be like the hypocrite who pray in the corners. Uh, and by by teaching us that, uh, or he ordering that actually, because we have to follow or we have to reject. Uh, by by saying that, he forbid us from being hypocrite, and that destroy the way of many people who take advantage of showing themselves as they are holy or good men or good women. So they start, you know, I start speaking about how they give donations. So he said, if you give with your right hand don't let your left hand and actually muhammad he stole that from jesus too so when you give you don't tell when you pray you don't tell and he said even when you fast you know wet your lips so nobody will know that you are fasting because this is not their business what do you what do you mean what do you mean uh, like keep you your mean? lips wet like you know if you fast like i mean don't uh uh, don't like we do, right? Yeah, don't uh, don't go around and say, "Hey, I'm fasting. I'm tired. Don't talk to me." I'm fa when you fast, nobody should know about it. Wash your face, huh? Mm -hmm. And don't mm -hmm. talk about it. Don't go around and say, "I'm fasting." And you know, if you fast, so, that's why. So you guys do fast, huh? For sure, actually, we have we fast men more than anyone. For sure, and depend in the church, uh, like as an example, the Orthodox. <clears throat> They have this is a must there's the the uh, uh, before the christmas and there's the one before the easter total will be almost 90 days of fasting every year and then there's fasting every week you know uh, but this is the event in you but however it's not a must to fast as we said it's not a must to pray too because it have to come from your heart a person he force himself to pray, he is not praying. A person he forces himself to fast, he is not fasting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A person he forces himself to give donation, he did not give donation. He gave it to him because maybe somebody uh, forcing you. You know, you are ashamed of yourself in front of your family. You know, you are cheap. You are not giving. You are not helping. So you give maybe in front of your kids. You want to show that you are a good guy. Or you want to show you are a good guy, so you pray in front of them. So it has to come from your heart, and whatever comes from your heart is you. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why the Messiah said, from their fruits you shall know them. In order for the fruit to be your fruit, the fruit come by itself. You cannot force a tree to make fruit. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. And and why do you say why do you call him father? Why I call him father? Yeah. Yeah. You see, because in the Quran, as an example, we we see that the Quran says, "Wama khalaqtu al-insa wa jinn illa liyabudu." I created not the human and the genie except to worship. In the Bible, no. Even though we are created and we should worship, but He created us to be His children. So, because God He loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son. The begotten Son He come to this earth and He call us brothers. So, who is our Father? Mm -hmm. God okay, the Maker. Is good. Yeah. So, <laughs> I forget. So, so that means when I pray, for example, it says here, um, I'm sure you know this anyways, Matthew 6, 9 to 13, you know, it says, uh, this is this then, how you should pray. You know, when he said like, um, our Father in heaven. Yeah, that's I, what I'm I saying would, to you. I would say the same as well, or I would say our God. You can say the same, you know, if you like. You know, the, the reason uh, that, that's a prayer, it's it just telling them, what is included in your prayer? It's not about exactly you say the same, but you can pray the same. Uh, but it's what is included in your prayer. Like asking for forgiveness in the same time you forgive. And I can do this in my language, correct? In any language. Yeah, okay, this is good. This is good. God, he understands any language. He is God, you know? Okay, now very simply you know i need to obviously go back read the bible again you know? <laughs> it's a big book but I, I can do it again no problem but, but my question is this my, my friend um okay in islam you know it's it's kind of simple right in a way you, you have instructions and then you follow them okay mm -hmm. and in a way it makes you a slave you know what I mean? Hmm. But sometimes being a slave is easier to, to, to understand life. Not that <laughs> better. Hmm. So, so what, what I'm asking you is this. In, in Islam, you pray, you fast. It's very clear. You have certain times. What does your God, what does God want? Sorry, what does the Father want? You see, when you say a certain time, uh, it's it, it uh, first of all time is not exist really i mean time is just a, it's just a matter of uh, circulation of light around us we go we call it time right so the sun goes around us and then we make it morning and then we call it day and we call it night but time is not exist for god and because of that you pray to god any time why you want to pray in a certain time when God is alive and He's always there, any time is a good time for God, and any time is a good time to pray. It just has to come from your heart. When you feel you need it, you do it. You can pray before you drive your car. You can pray before you leave the house. You can pray when you are sitting in the bus and there's people next to you and nobody will notice you are praying. Because the prayer is coming from your heart, not from your lips. Prayer is not words you say by your lips. It is something in your heart and you mean it. Because many, especially the hypocrites, they say something in their lips, but they don't mean it. It is something you mean, something you believe, and something you want to be. That is prayer. Prayer is not mm -hmm. even speaking to God, actually. You know, prayer is, is decency. Is your decency. So when you are decent, uh, you pray to your wife, saying to her, I love you. This is a prayer of love. It doesn't mean you worship her. But when you pray to the Lord, uh, you know, you are given, uh, uh, like, uh, keep, keeping in touch with your maker, let's say. Uh, like, if you have a father, and uh, you did not call him for a year, and one day, because you need him, you call him. Your father, he will say, well, now you come to me because you need me, because you need money. What do you need? Why you are calling? What happened? Something fishy about you. Because you need him, now you are calling. Many people, they do that. They forget about God as long as they are healthy. They are wealthy. They are young. 
and the second they collapse suddenly they say god forgive me god help me god oh god please you know god so as long as they are fine god does not exist the second they are in the ground collapsing sick or poor or they don't have money or they lost their family something bad happened suddenly they start asking god for help so don't be one of those pray to the lord so you can be a child who always remember his father and the Father always, He will come your remembrance. Okay, okay. This is what prayer is. Prayer is to be in touch with your Maker. It's not a word you say. It's a feeling you live. It's like you are in love with a person who you believe He is your provider, He is your protector. He will do anything to save you. He, he loves you. You know how you can return love you return love by love okay <clears throat> sorry i i don't know i feel like you are crying but yeah you know i mean it's okay so you know it's good to have heart not to have a rock inside god love yeah god is love because and of the sins i committed you know all of us, we commit sin. Who says to you, I'm better than you? Well, you, you don't know me. <laughs> you know, you have no idea you are talking to whom. <laughs> no, but I know me because I've been worshipping a false god. Yeah, it's okay, my friend. You see, every every moment have a time. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Paul, he used to go after the Christian to kill them. <laughs> At least he did not kill any Christian yet, right? No, but so, I converted many Christians. <laughs> well, you know, you can fix that and you can contact them. And you can help them to to see the truth. You can fix it. You can fix it. You can call those people, and you can contact them, and you can expo, you know, ex explain to them why you know you think that uh, you made a mistake, and you yourself you you left this uh, this false cult. No, you see, one of them passed away. You see. It, well, I, I believe the Lord. So that means I sent him to hell. Okay, okay. I, I understand how. Uh, I understand. But we pray that the Lord, is, the Lord okay. is merciful. We pray that the yeah. Lord is merciful, and He know that by your heart, you know. Now you do not know that it was wrong when you did it. It was you thought it was the right thing. And I think at the end of the day. Uh, I think you did not convert him to Islam. I think he converted to Islam because he chose to leave Jesus. Okay. I guess so. Thank you, CP. Um... So do you accept? Do you accept the Messiah as your Lord? Yeah. What do I mean to that. I mean, I mean. Uh, you know, I I saw a message previously from you. And that made me confused because before uh, I felt like you become a Christian, you know, and look like you were still a questioning, right? So, so let me tell you what happened, okay? Yeah. We spoke. I told. Then I went to my local masjid. I spoke. I spoke uh, to many different people, okay? Okay. In the UK, I went to many cities. I spent many, a lot of money. Game people, speaking to them, calling them. I went abroad. I went to Saudi Arabia. I went to Imra you know, the Emirates. I went to Qatar. I went to almost every country in the Middle East to get the answers I needed. But instead, I got people lying to me, um, asking me, you know, uh, are you a mushrik? You know, are you being paid? Um, People finding out who I was, trying to question why I'm, you know, trying to get answers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're becoming very hostile, very defensive. And my questions were very, very simple. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it, it should be easy for these scholars to, to answer. Yeah. But but they didn't. They lied to me. And when I go back and check the references or I look at your videos to, you know, I have a notebook. So whenever you say something, I note it down just to verify if you're lying to me. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and 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 he's there, 
when I question these imams, they they always say, "Oh, it's da'if. It's you know, uh, okay, this one is authentic, but uh, it's been you know abrogated." They always come up with the most extreme scenarios, and I and I'm not ignorant in Islam. I've studied it for you know five years as well. I can't tell. <clears throat> Uh, I also memorized the, the Quran, so I, I don't know, you know, it's a big problem. So you see, but anyways, uh, yeah, it's okay. the past now, right, you know, it's the past. Now I have to read um, the Bible. Yeah, but you see, uh, I'm very thankful that the sheikhs are liars, because if they do not lie to you, uh, then you will not notice how hypocrite they are and how fake this religion. Uh, because if they say the truth and they try to convince you with the truth, it might work. You know, it might say, okay, you know what, the prophet did that, give you excuse, but they deny, and then you find out that everything we say is true. And then you, you, a person will ask himself, why they are lying? What what is what are they hiding? You know, suddenly they are not proud of what the prophet did. That's mean they themselves are not really believers. Right? Because, exactly. because if I'm a believer in Jesus and you say to me, Jesus will come in the day of judgment and he will send people to hell. And, you know, I would say, okay, yeah, he will do that. So this is not nice. This is okay. No problem. You can say whatever. That's what Jesus will do. Um, you know, I'm not going to <laughs> make Jesus. Uh, you see, Jesus, when we say Jesus, uh, God is love. Uh, God is love. But there's a time where God, he will send people to hell. The, the, the opportunity of love is over because you rejected him. It's your fault. So I will not be ashamed of my Lord because somebody think that he did something is not right. This is his opinion. For me, I am proud of him and I'm a follower. If a person, he says to me, uh, in the Old Testament, uh, your God, he ordered the Jews to go for war. I will not start giving excuses and you know, I will, the story is there and I agree with it. I'm not going to duct tape. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. Exactly. So a true believer is not a person who duct tape because only those who duct tape, the ones who duct tape, they are ashamed. That's why they are using duct tape to cover it up. And a person who is ashamed of something, practicing taqiyya, he is not a believer, and his God is not true God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, Christian Prince. Um, okay, just, just okay. But, but what? No, no, that's okay. No worries. So thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome, my friend. I'm happy for you, and uh, uh, be our guest always. You can contact me if you want to call and ask question. I will be happy to have you. And you can invite those people who you convert to Islam uh, to join. You know, they will leave. They will leave. I have a need to contact them. Yes, you're right. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you very much. I may the Lord bless you and bless your family. And we ask all the Christian here to pray for our brother here. I'm not going to say his name. Uh, uh, we pray for him. We pray for his family. We pray for his friends. And we pray for the person who... Uh, who passed away and he thought this time is right. Uh, you know, there is no salvation except by Jesus. But, you know, what we can say, people, they make choice. And sometimes, you know, you, you make the wrong choice and the choice can be very, very, very horrible choice. Thank you, brother, for calling. And he will be in our prayer. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Take care. Well. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> Actually, I lost my voice. And uh, we have two people today. And the first one, you know, he don't want to admit that he left Islam, but he left Islam. The second one is a smart. He studied Islam very well. And he, you know, he cannot deny it. He cannot, you know, he cannot, uh, he cannot duct tape no more. 
It's about decency. It's about how honest you are with yourself. Uh, God is good, and God do miracles. And God today, he washed his heart. It's not me. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to help. It's God who, who you know, who open your heart. And uh, the Lord, he says, knock and I will open for you. You did knock, he opened for you. I'm just a brother who is uh, trying to help. Uh, the first one, Moonlight, I don't know who is he, I don't care. Anyway, I mean, he is fine, the first one, but he, you know, he, they, some people, they try to, uh, you know, they don't want to, I don't know, maybe he didn't want to be in trouble because he is going to leave Islam, but obviously he left Islam already. He laughed at the Quran, he laughed at Muhammad, he laughed at his stories, and yet he didn't want to say, I left Islam, you left Islam. Is he still here? All right. Okay, you read the gospel and the Quran. Why you wanna read the Quran? You did laugh at the Quran already. Why you wanna laugh? The, why you wanna read the Quran? <laughs> and yeah, you know the problem is if you read the Quran, you will die laughing, my friend. The Quran is a book of you know it's good to read the Bible and read the Quran because the the Bible will will make you close to God. The Quran will will release will 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 be a, like a comedy time. <clears throat> you know. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Sometime when I'm driving my car, uh, I remember a statement a Muslim he says to me, like it comes to your head, and I laugh, you know. So if you are with me, you will be wondering why this guy, you think this guy is crazy, why he laugh now? Nobody's talking, you know. <laughs> because Islam is really is a comedy. Islam is so silly. Islam is so stupid. So you remember how Muslims they try to defend Islam in a certain moment, and it is a you know it's a piece of comedy, like. Last time we have this guy, Ultimate, you know, from Senegal. He called me and he is so upset and he said, I did not say to you that the, uh, 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 that he did not take anything from the Quran. I said he did not take anything it was from the Quran. <laughs> he took from the Quran what it was not in the Quran. Suppose you know he's fixed it. So there's a lot of comedy come with debating Muslims. I feel sorry for them. They are, you know, uh, trying their best it's a, it's a, uh, you know it's it's a disaster you you a person pray you bow down you worship this god and the prophet is amazing and then you talk to this guy his name is christian prince and you will find that your prophet is a scumbag he is not good man he have no zero ethic he he's belongs be, be, below zero <laughs> you know he's a treason ethic and his god is not is, is a stupid god and you'll find the Quran is a stupid book. And, and that is really a disaster. That will bring stress. That will bring a lot of, uh, you know, sad moment for a person who really, truly believe. But the truth is a truth, and the truth will set you free. The Lord said. And today, our brother here, the truth set him free. So, I want to say, guys, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we will change the title the title is not anymore about uh, community trial uh, and if you are wondering why this uh, title is saying that uh, because somebody asked me to make a create a community and make a membership so people can join and they will give me money and my answer no my work is going to be always for free i will never charge a penny and the lord is my provider so I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you all. We pray to our brother. We pray for the Muslims. We don't want to hate them because the second you hate, it is the same second you feel in the trap of the devil. And Muhammad is the devil. He wants us to hate the Muslims and he wants the Muslims to hate us. And then we end in bloodshed. And the only one who will be having party is the devil. God is love, and the best of us is the one who love more, not the one who hate more. In Islam, the best of them is the one who hate more, not the one who love more. Because either you take the side 
of the God of love, or you take the side of the God of hate, and that is the devil. It's your choice. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Don't forget to download the videos and share them with your friends. And we will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a scam. And we prove it every day. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 